Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Red. We are going to be going through Rock Tunnel today, but first we have a trainer battle. Isn't that just fucking interesting? Because uh, it kind of isn't, I don't know. But yeah, this is the cave, I think, where a lot of playthroughs will stop. Um, I, I know from experience that I struggled getting through this cave on my first playthrough. My sister did too. I don't know how many people around the world just stopped playing Pokemon because of this goddamn cave, but... Because, like, okay, I mean, once we get to the cave, I can really talk about it, but, like... Like, it's just hard, man. It's not a difficult cave, and that, like, the trainers are hard. It's just that, like, navigating it without light can be hard, and, like... Is this battle over? Because it would help me explain this better. But hey, Lee Cuisine can be able to learn Psybeam now, which it only took until level 27. But now, this is a good Pokemon here. We got a Psychic-type attack. Get rid of Thunder Wave. Fuck that shit. Now we got one more trainer, Clefairy. Apparently Clefairy was going to be, like, the mascot to the Pikachu. The Pikachu is just a bit cooler, even though Clefairy is cuter. I mean, they gotta get that balance of cool and cute, and Pikachu just does it better than Clefairy. And Eevee is kind of like usurping Clefairy, as I said, with like the Pokemon Yellow remakes. Although, uh, I mean, even though Eevee was the rival starter, it kind of does make sense that like Eevee is bigger than a lot of other Pokemon, just because like it, it is getting a lot of love. I don't know if that is as an effect of Pokemon Yellow, but yeah, as we can see, when I went into the cave, it is pitch black, so we need the HM for Flash to make it bright. I'm really upset that the entrance is, like, the fucking ladder, instead of, like, every other cave, like, the entrance is on the wall. So, yeah, I don't know if this was, like, not intended to be the entrance of the cave or what. But, yeah, it's a ladder. But yeah, I mean, like, you need Flash to, like, see in this cave. It is possible to navigate it without Flash, like I've said. And I'm pretty sure speedrunners do that all the time. But, like, like you need Flash to see. And, like, the way to get Flash is just so stupid. Because, like, so in the game, I, I get to finally talk about this now. Like, in the game, there are, like, random, like, buildings where one of, like, Professor Oak's aides or assistants will just be hanging out. And they'll be like, oh, if you've caught 10 Pokemon, I'll give you HM Flash. If you've caught 20 Pokemon, I'll give you whatever item. 30 Pokemon, I think, is the item finder. I don't remember what it is for 40. And then 50, you get the experience share. I think it's called the experience all on this game. But, like... So, to get the one for... I don't know, like, the locations. Usually they're, like, in buildings in between routes. Although... The first one is, like, just in a random house, which makes it even more frustrating. But, like, yeah, the, I, I kind of skipped over it because I was just commentating about, like, the Pokemon Yellow remakes, but, like, so the only reason why I went through Diglett's Cave is because if you go through that cave and then you have Cut, then you can go into a building where there's a aid and he'll give you the HM for Flash. And, like, that's so stupid because, like, Okay, I, I get that most people that play the game, they'll probably go through Diglett's Cave, and then, like, and then they'll get to that tree, and they'll be like, oh, shoot, I need cut. How do I get cut? Okay, whatever. And then, and then, like, okay, whatever. They'll, they'll probably figure it out on their own. I mean, it is good game design, because they do make you figure it out on your own, just because they do shove Diglett Cave, like, right fucking on the street. But, like... Eh, I don't know, like, the... If you're like me... Well, I, I guess there's two types of Pokemon players. The, the guy that, like, catches Pokemon, and the guy that doesn't. And I feel like most of us on our first playthrough will be the guy that catches a lot of Pokemon, but, like, doesn't use any of them. So imagine if Pokemon Red is, like, your, your third game or something. And, like, at this point you realize, like, catching Pokemon that you don't want to use is useless. So, like... You just got, like, your starter and, like, maybe, like, one or two other Pokemon or something. And I, this is pretty early in the game, so I don't know, like, how likely it is that someone will be using a lot of Pokemon. Although, I have been saying, like, in Viridian Forest, like, you'll want to have, like, a good team just because Poison is annoying. But that's in the early game. Like, after Viridian Forest, you really don't need a team. Because, like, I don't remember if I got rid of Grub and Rattly yet. I, I probably did. But, like, see, I don't need them anymore because, like... 
poison isn't an issue in this game after the first gym. Like, after the first half hour, you don't worry about poison. It's just, it's just a thing that happens occasionally, but it's not like game ending or whatever. Plus, I have a psychic type who will probably eat up every single poison type in the game in like one or two hits. And like, yeah, I don't know. Well, like, uh, I was gonna say, like, when me and my sister played Leaf Green and Fire Red, I don't know if I mentioned this already, I probably had, like, during Sapphire, but I don't know if I did it for this playthrough yet, but, like, like, yeah, we would play our Pokemon games at the same time every time we play them, because, like, we both got, like, Leaf Green and Fire Red for Christmas, like, whatever year after they came out, what was that, like, 2005? That would be kind of sounding right. But, like, yeah, we would play the games at the same time, and then once we got to Rock Tunnel, neither of us had Flash, because, like, I don't know, I guess... I guess we just didn't want to go through Diglett's Cave, or didn't have Cut at the time, or something happened, like I've been already talking about, but, like... I was able to get through Rock Tunnel without light, but my sister couldn't, she would, like, get lost, and then... And I don't know. I don't, I don't know if she had like escape rope since she would like just get out of there that way. But like, eventually I had to like help her get out of the cave and then, um, yeah. But like that was like the first like, like what the fuck do I do point. And I think I've already mentioned this like a few episodes ago. But then like the second like what do I do point is like at the seventh gym. And I'm sure I'll talk about that during that respective episode, because I already talked about it like a past episode, but like, yeah, there's just like two points in the game where like you just get stuck and don't know what to do. I think like in Sapphire, I know there was one point where like I just got stuck entirely and that was like the point where you need to dive into the water because I didn't know where to get dive, even though, I don't know, that's like the house next to Steven's house, but... Yeah, I, I didn't know where to get dive, I couldn't figure out. I think once I did get it, I didn't know where to go. I don't know, I just remember, like, I had the map, and then the map was like, hey, go to Pseudopolis, and then, I'm like, is it, like, inside the mountain? I can't climb the mountain, I don't know. So, so in the water is dark, I don't know what to do here, I'm lost. But I think, like, most of the points in that game where, like, I got stuck were because gym leaders were, like, fucking hard in that game. And yeah, that's just how that goes. Um, I mean, I did get stuck at the Elite Four, but that's because I didn't want to spend money on like revives and hyper potions and stuff. But I, I mean, I wouldn't call that like a what do I do point. That was just more of a like you know you get ethers and like I don't know how often you use them. Like I pick up ethers in this playthrough and like yeah they're good to have for the Elite Four, but like other than that it's like I don't know I don't want to use them because you can't buy them and you're like. Well, like, I don't know how many other people, like, when you play games and you get an item that you can't buy, you're like, well, guess I gotta keep it forever then. Like, even though they gave it to me for the sole purpose of using it, it's like, if there's 16 ethers, like, hey, why, why not collect all 16 and be like, hey, I got all 16 ethers, hey. <laughs> but yeah, we're in the cave, and the commentary is probably going to shit unless I come up with a story. But, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I use the Wii U gamepad to, like, watch the vi the videos. I don't know how weird that is. I think I already mentioned this. Like, I could just play the video on my laptop and then record the audio on the same laptop. But, like, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm afraid Audacity will lag out and, like, stop recording. That hasn't happened this recording playthrough yet. Uh, probably because I'm not, like, running Elgato stuff and whatever, but... Yeah, I mean, I just, like, plug in the Wii U, watch the videos there, and then I'm like, well, since I got the Wii U out, let's play Splatoon again. And, like, so I haven't played Splatoon 1 since Splatoon 2 came out. And, like, man, that game is so... Okay, it's either, like, there's a lot more lag now, but, like... Okay, first of all, no one's even playing Splatoon anymore. Because, like, sometimes I'll get in a server and, like, I'll be paired up with people right away. And the other times, I'll just be in a room with, like, between, like, four and seven people, and we'll just be waiting for a minute for the server to kick us out, so we can, like, all join the other group that's playing, and, like, wait for those people to get kicked out, or to stop playing or something. And, like, 
I should probably be like doing this discussion on like a Splatoon related video or something. But I'm, I'm talking about work and it's not even a work related video. Did, did that guy give me 666 money? Who knows? But like, I mean Splatoon is just kind of jank now. I mean like I still think the metagame is a lot better. I don't know because like you don't really use snipers that often in Splatoon 2. Or I mean like, like you'll see sniper players but like in Splatoon 1, like, they're, like, actually common, and, like, in Splatoon 2, like, they're uncommon, I guess I'd say. I don't know what the percentage gap would be. I couldn't come up with those numbers on the spot here. But, like, I don't know if it's because of the lag or what, because, like, I heard that, like, Splatoon 2, like, so, in, like, a 60 frame second, apparently it only registers, like, 12 of the frames or something. I, I don't have, like, any citations on this, so I could just be spewing bullshit, but, like, like, Splatoon 1, apparently, I don't know if it's, like, 30 or even less than that, like, 24 or something, but, like, I don't know, I guess, like, it's easier to get snipes with the, the sniper, or it's, that uh, the sniper has a bigger hitbox or something, but, like, I was using the sniper in Splatoon 1, and I'm like, wow, this is a lot easier to use. Or maybe, like, the controls I have set for Splatoon 1 are, like, easier. I don't know, because, like, whenever I play Splatoon 2, I, like, no-scope all the time. I mean, that's kind of how I do with Splatoon 1. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. But, like, uh, I just, I think that metagame is just better. I mean, like, like, people were always, like, talking shit about the, like, the Ink Zuka weapon. I think that's what it's called. Where, like, you pretty much get a sniper, but, like, you get, like, eight free shots without, like, any real charge-up, and, like, and you get, like, longer distance than the snipers, and, like, okay, that's kind of broken, but, like, at the same time, it isn't, because, like, it is pretty hard to use, and the accuracy is, like, very thin, and then, like, uh, Splatoon 2 has, like, Ink Zuka, but it flies, but, like, I think that the range is less than the Ink Zuka, and, like, you can move around with that, though, so I think that's, like, a bit more annoying. But, I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'll just, like, always say that Splatoon 1 has the the better metagame, but I think after playing Splatoon 2 for, like, 250 hours, I think that one has better maps now, but... But, I, I don't know, like, just the, the map design is a lot wider in Splatoon 2. I could probably wait for this when I do, like, my top 20 or whatever Splatoon 2 maps video. Which I've already, like, pre-scripted, although, um, there is another map coming out eventually called the Wahoo World. And I think that's just, like, extra funny because, like, there was just a random meme, like, two weeks ago. Although, when it's videos, it would be three weeks ago, where it's just, like, like, there's always this meme where it's, like, like, me giggling and then someone else. What are you laughing at? Oh, nothing. And then it's like me internally, and then it'll show a picture of a meme or something. And then the meme is just like the fucking Wikipedia page for the fish Wahoo. I wish I think that is a funny name for a fish, because it's like Wahoo. Something. I don't know. I'm, I'm just spewing stupid stuff. But Wahoo World. I, I don't know if they're going to stop at 20 maps. Usually. Well, I mean, I, I can't say usually because there's only been one other Splatoon game. But when they were announcing the last maps, they were like, these are the last maps, guys. Like these two here and I don't think they said that for like the last Nintendo Direct where they were like here's like three more maps we're gonna be releasing soon but they were like here's Camp Triggerfish here's Wahoo World here's uh I don't know what the last one before camp was but yeah I don't know or maybe it was like Piranha Pits or something but yeah I'll save all that map discussion for the top 20 or so video That'd be crazy if, like, Splatoon 2 gets up to, like, 24 maps. That would be a lot. Because, like, I mean, the first game had, like, uh, 16 maps. And then, but, like, the maps rotated every four hours, so it's, like, some days you don't even get to play a map. Well, I mean, most days you won't even play a map, because, like... Because there's only, uh, two maps per rotation for ranked. I'm, I'm only gonna say ranked, so, like, six maps will be used on, like... Monday or whatever, and then that's what day this is, because it's episode 7. But then, like, uh, Tuesday, it'll be six maps, and there's a possibility that one of those maps will be a repeat, and then the third day, six maps again, so, like, there's a possibility that there could be, like, a four-day gap where one map just doesn't even get played, 
And, like, if that map happens to be, like, a uh, Salt Spray Rig, which doesn't have a Tower Controller or Rainmaker, like, you might only see that map, like, once every two weeks or something. So, yeah, that's how that goes, but, uh... Man, I'm just... I'm just thinking of stuff to talk about here, you know? Splatoon. I mean, it's gonna be summer soon. I was gonna wait for a few more days to talk about E3 stuff. Um, I don't want to make my prediction video just now. I mean, I'm not making a prediction video. I'll, I'll probably just make my predictions on a Pokemon video. But, yeah, that'll be pretty hype. Um, uh, I know Nintendo's gonna have a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm just waiting for Smash Bros, really. Anything else will be icing on the cake. Uh, we're waiting for that Pokemon game announcement. Like, even though it, it may have already happened by the time this video is out. And then, like, I, I, I want to know what PlayStation is going to have, because, like, I think last year their E3 was, like, mostly stuff from the year before. And, like, a bunch of those games have released now. Like, God of War came out at the time of the recording. Detroit Become Human isn't out yet, but, like, when this episode airs, it will have been, it, it will have been out for a few days. It's, it's like, like, okay, that's, like, two slots for, like, new games then. I think that they spell spot like on Shadow of the Colossus. Okay, Shadow of the Colossus. Um, yeah, I, I can't wait to play Detroit to Become Human. Like that is that's a game I've been hyping up for like two or three years. Like, like I discovered it, or I discovered like a trailer of it, like right after I finished playing the first Ace Attorney game. And like I'm not saying the game looks identical to Ace Attorney, but like. It's got a lot of, like, the same, like, spirit to it, like, where you go through a map to, like, observe stuff, and then, like, you have to, like, pick the right things to say in order to get the best ending. Although, like, Ace Attorney, there's only, you succeed or you fail, and the you fail option is usually from you say the wrong thing too many times, which I, I guess that is what happens in Detroit Become Human, like, uh... At least, I'm, I haven't, like, really been watching any, like, gameplay videos, because I don't want any spoilers. But, like, uh, I don't know if it's the first, it, it, it probably isn't the first level, but, like, there's one level, it was on one of the trailers, where, like, one of the androids, I mean, like, all the androids are, like, going rogue, but, like, one android who's rogue, like, he it has, like, a girl, and, and, like, he's gonna jump off a building, or throw her off the building, or whatever. And so, like... Like, you're just, like, lying and, like, telling the truth, going back and forth to, like, try and gain his trust. And, like, I don't know if every single level is gonna be, like, gain their trust, or if they'll just be, like, like, do the right thing to, like, get out of the situation, like, as safely as possible. But, like, that, that's the kind of gameplay I want, and, like, you get to, like, explore a map and stuff. I mean, like, that wasn't always my favorite part of the Ace Attorney games, like, trying to, like, figure out how to get more, like, information. That was always difficult for me, but... but... I mean, I can't wait to play it. I bought a PlayStation just to play it. Although, there were other PlayStation games I wanted to play, like, Little Big Planet. Although, I don't have that yet. I was gonna get it at work, because, like, some days, like, our associate discount is, like, massive. Like, 35% off. And, like, we had a Little Big Planet 3 for, like, $10 at one point. And I was, like, in the, like, limited quantity section, like, sometimes those get discounted quite a bit. But apparently the, the limited quantity discount went up, or, like, or it went down, so like the game was back to, like, $20, which isn't really a sale. So I'm like, oh, well, I guess I won't get the game then. Because, like, that, that's a $10 game right there. I could probably get it on eBay for $10. I haven't really checked since, uh, like, a year or so. But yeah, I mean, like, I got, I got the PlayStation for Detroit, but I wanted to play The Last Guardian, Shadow of the Colossus. I think I've already talked about, like, PlayStation stuff, but, I mean, like, uh, Journey was a game on PlayStation 3 I always wanted to play. I don't know what it is about that. Like, I guess, like, I happened to, like, at around the same time that I remember hearing about that game, I had a character that I made. Like, an original character that I drew, and it was just, like, a character in, like, a blue robe, and then it just happened to be red afterwards, I don't think Journey influenced that at all, but... I mean, I, I got a character in my red robe just like that, I'm like, that's fucking crazy. And then, uh... I mean, I still, I'm waiting for that to go on sale. Most of the PlayStation games I download, I wait for it to go on sale. 
Like I got Loco Roco 1 AM2. I haven't. I. Like, I. Oh my God. Stuttering, Ryan. Stop fucking stuttering. I need to learn how to talk for 50 minutes straight without stuttering. Really though. <laughs> I mean, I. I need people to talk to so I can breathe in between. But like, I played one level of Roco. Lo Loco Roco. Oh my God. And it was okay. Um, I remember. My sister hyped it up, and I looked up like a video or a commercial or something. I'm like, "Wow, this game does look fun!" And we were like, planning on shipping like money together to get a uh, PlayStation Portable just to play Local Roco. I'm glad we didn't because like I have no idea any other PlayStation Portable games that are good. Even though I think PlayStation Portable sold like I could be wrong here, like 80 million units or something. Maybe that's a lot. I know the PlayStation and Vita didn't do very well. Like, apparently it's just like the anime console or something. I mean, like a lot of PlayStation games are just anime stuff from what I've seen on the store. But like, like uh, I mean, every time I check the sale page, it's like always the Hatsune Miku games. And I'm like, wow, rhythm games. Like, I don't know, eh, whatever. We don't care about Hatsune Miku, we are, we are not thoughts for the thought bot. But, uh, then there's like Undertale, and then like I, I played a bit of Undertale on PlayStation 4. I, I was like considering doing a let's play of that. I'm sure that will still be like in the future an Undertale playthrough on the channel, but that's like, hey, we're gonna put that on Nintendo Switch, and I'm like, oh, now we gotta get it a third time just for the Switch. <laughs> like I don't care about it being portable. It's just like, would I rather have it on the system I will have hooked up to my TV, or would I rather have it on? the system that just kind of sits on a chair in my bedroom. Like, hey, let's put it on the system I play. There you go. Like, I, I'm waiting for Minecraft to come out on Switch, too. Apparently, like, they finally said the, the Better Together update or whatever that's gonna come out, like, June 21st or 22nd or something. And, like, I'm excited for that, because, like, I, I've been waiting to go through, like, the Mario Minecraft map for a long time. And, like, I don't know if it will be possible, but, like, I have this Xbox map that I would love to be able to transfer over to my Switch. Because, like, that's where I've built all my stuff. And, like, it, I don't know, it would just be really nice to have it on my Switch. Because I can, like, keep working on it then. And, like, I, I don't know, I don't play Minecraft too often anymore, just because, like, I've lost inspiration to make stuff. But, like... Because I would just go on creative and, like, put in a podcast or comedians and just build some shit. And, like, uh, a lot of my stuff I just, like, don't finish because I'm, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Or, like, the podcast ends and I'm, like, I don't know what I'm doing. But, like, I don't know. If I if I wanted to, I could probably just make, like, a really disappointing tour video of that map that I made. I'm, like, being very cryptic here, but, like, I have, like... Just a lot of creations that are like, uh, if you watch like the Rooster Teeth Minecraft Let's Play series or whatever, I don't watch them anymore, I stopped like a year or so ago, but like, like I would love watching their just like random Let's Plays of like, stuff that Jeff and Gavin would build, and then like, it, they, they would be huge, the like, creations, and then they would just play them and have a blast, and I'm like, oh man, like, I, I want to build stuff like that. And, like, I wouldn't build them to play with other people, even though, like, the option for multiplayer was on them. But, like, I don't know. I just liked the the idea of just building stuff. It was relaxing to me. I, I wouldn't say it was, like, reducing my stress. Because it would be, like... Like, sometimes I'd have a notebook out to, like, calculate shit. To, just so you know. And, like, a lot of the stuff I built, I'm like, I wish this was bigger. Shoot. And then it's like, well, I'm going back now, because I already spent six hours getting it to be the shape it already is, and I don't have five more hours to make it twice as big. Fuck. Okay. But I'm not saying this episode's wrapping up. This is a shorter episode. But we got, like, uh, two and a half minutes about, give or take. I'm trying to think of what else I do. I, I don't know if I go against, like, anyone else, or... Or if I, like, empty out my bag and buy a bunch of items at the end. I feel like that's something I would do. But, yeah, I guess we will find out. 
my throat is getting really sore here, but that's okay. I just have to record two episodes in a session and then we'll be good. And this is the second episode. Oh yeah, this is Lavender Town. This is where, uh... Creepypastas happen and stuff. I, I don't read creepypastas anymore. I read, like, two when I was in, like, seventh grade. And I'm like, that's enough internet for me, like... <laughs> like, uh... The Pokemon forum I would always go on. There was one guy who, like, loved creepypastas and stuff, so, like... Like, you could, like, upload, like, your Pokemon, like, fan sprites and stuff, and, like, all of his Pokemon would be, like, black and have bloody eyes and, like, bleeding out of their mouths, and it would be like, eh, that's weird, but... I think he had, like, an edgy username, so it was totally, like, understandable, like, oh, he's the edgy guy! Like, I, I say, like, I would miss that forum, but at the same time, it's like, I didn't really have any bonds with anyone, even though, like... I've probably already mentioned this, like, the core community was, like, like, about 20 of us, and then there was a lot of people that just kind of jumped in here and there, but, like, I don't know, like, most of the posts being made were just by, like, the 20 of us, and there was a chat room, and, like, I wasn't old enough to really understand chat rooms, but people were in there, and then sometimes I would just pop in and disappear a minute later to be like, what's a chat room? I don't know, well... I'm only 11 years old. I'm Lakeish Jackson, I'm 42! If you don't understand what I'm talking there, look up Professor Layton and the Malignant Growth. Ma uh, let me uh, enunciate that, Malignant Growth. Because uh, my mouth is just full of spit and snot from talking. It it's not like that though, it's not like that, but... Yeah, those are funny videos. Uh, kind of offensive, but kind of funny. But yeah, we are pretty much wrapped up with this episode. Next episode, we're going to uh, Celadon City to do some shit. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what the thumbnail is, but is that the self co up or not self co? Like the rocket hideout? I don't know. Well, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like as well. Channel growth, subscribe to the updates and my uploads as soon as they happen. Until then, see you next time. Bye.